I'm trying to photograph a senator, and I got a big close-up of you. Ah, oh, oh, drop it. <laughs> Commander Ford. Oh, pardon, Commander Ford. Pardon me. What time is the banquet for Mr. Dewey Roberts? Eight o'clock. It's after eight now. This is Washington, ma'am. Everything's late here. Commander Ford. Commander Ford. Do you suppose it's too late to get into the banquet hall? Well, if you have your own Panzer division, you might make it. May I borrow a pen and the use of your desk? Oh, I certainly help you, sir. Jean, will you use your phone a second? Yes, but no outside calls, Mr. Mason. Let me have the sixth floor. Hello, Bueller. Bueller, sweetheart, this is Mason of the Post Dispatch. Listen, darling, the six million readers of the Post Dispatch want your big heartbeat to get an exclusive. No, not on you this time, dear. On your boss, Dewey Roberts. Now, wait a minute. Don't hang up. I want to be the first to hang up. Oh, these secretaries of the big shots, they shoot louder than the big shots themselves. I thought you said Dewey Roberts was a personal friend of yours. Sure, I played golf on the same course with him once. We had a long conversation, too. What did he say, four? Oh, that was before I became the Mr. Roberts. Oh, Harry, would you take this up to Miss Dewey Roberts from 1710? That's right. We ain't paid the risk of lives, you know. Oh, a young man. Yes. Would you see that Mr. Roberts gets this note, Mr. Dewey Roberts? Oh, you don't expect no answer, ma'am. Oh, no. No, I don't, but if he should want to see me or anything, I'll be here in the lobby. Would you tell him that? Sure, sure, I will. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, miss. I beg your pardon. You know Mr. Roberts? Yes. Would you like to see him? Oh, I'd like to very much. Well, if you want to be certain not to miss him, you just come out over here. Sit facing the elevators. Eventually, they have to come out of one of them. Then you'll be sure to see him. Oh, thank you. You must know Mr. Roberts pretty well. Oh, yes. At one time, I think I knew him better than anyone else in the world. And you haven't seen him in quite some time. Not for a long time. Think he'll remember you? Oh, yes, I know he will. Why? Is this one of your exclusives? Oh, no, of course not. I'm sorry. It might be a false scent, but I think I catch the faint aroma of lavender and old romance. Ladies and gentlemen, this broadcast comes to you from the Mayflower Hotel in Washington, D.C. Our distinguished guest of honor, Mr. Dewey Roberts, has not as yet arrived, but the banquet hall is overflowing with people who have come from near and far for this important occasion. We will commence our program with a musical rendition of Mr. Dewey Roberts' favorite song, Indiana. Dewey? Yes, Mr. Nell? Dewey, the flag, after all, is a symbol of our country. I think we should show respect when we salute it by standing at attention with our hands out of our pockets. Shall we try it again? Yes, ma'am. That looks much better. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to my flag, flag and, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation indivisible, indivisible 
with, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for all. Thank you, Dewey. Now, in our reading class today, we're supposed to start Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream. But rather than read it, I had an idea that I think will be a pleasant surprise to everyone. The Ben Greet players are doing Midsummer Night's Dream at a matinee, and our principal has given me permission to take you all to see it. <laughs> now, I've arranged with the streetcar company for a special car, and we'll all take our lunches and have a picnic before the matinee. Well, I'm glad you like it. Now, remember, we have a date. 11 o'clock promptly at the corner of Hill and Main, Saturday morning. Saturday? Saturday? Yes, Dewey? But Saturday's our ball game with Rome. Rome? Yes, Mr. Hopkins arranged it for Saturday afternoon. Mr. Hopkins? Our coach. Primarily, he's our manual training instructor. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sure Mr. Hopkins will postpone the game. The game's very important, Miss Chanel. And Dewey's our pitcher. I prefer seeing Shakespeare to baseball. Children, children, that will do. We'll forget about baseball for the time being. Now, who's the monitor today? I'm the monitor, Miss Chanel. Pass these papers around, Peter, while I write the problems on the board. Yes, Miss Chanel. doing down here in the middle of a class period? I have to be excused, sir. See me? No, sir. Then don't you think you'd better get back to class? It's just that she's going to make us all go to a play next Saturday, the day of our game with Rome. Who is she? Miss Trinnell, the new teacher that took Miss Finch's place. Did Miss Trinnell know about the game? No, sir, but I told her about Never it. Never mind. You just leave the baseball game to me. I think you better get back to your class. Yes, sir, but what about our game? Miss Trinnell probably knows what she's doing. I don't want to go to any old place Saturday. What's that? Nothing, sir. That was very good, Peter. Steve? Can you tell us when and where the next important engagement took place? No, ma'am. My sister took my history book. And I, I did not. I put it back in his desk. Steve, is the book in your desk now? Yes, ma'am, I guess it is. Very well. That will be part of your homework. Now, can someone else... No, Peter. Dewey. Dewey Roberts. Yes, ma'am. What are you reading? My book. Your history book? No, ma'am. Book by Christy Mathewson on how to pitch. May I have it, please? Mm -hmm. All right, Peter, since you're so anxious, you tell us. On September 7th, 1813, on Lake Erie, Commander Perry led nine ships in his bark, the Lauren. It was a brig, not a bark. Brig, Dewey, bark, Peter. What difference does it make? It's just an old-time boat. A brig's a two-masted square rigger, and a bark's got three masks. One square rig and two four and a half rig. He a know-it-all. I know what I read in the book. That will do. Dewey, you'll stay one hour after school and write 500 I beg your pardons on the blackboard. Yeah. Peter, you'll stay and write a composition on why a young man should control his temper. <laughs> Miss Trinnell? Yes, Kate? Dewey knows everything about boats, and Peter can't even swim. <laughs> All right, Kate, you can stay and write a composition on minding your own business. <laughs> Class is dismissed. Your apology is almost illegible now. 
Do you normally write with your left hand? No, ma'am. I'm just saving my wing for practice later. You'll save time if I can read it. I can feel just as sorry with my left hand as I can with my right. Come in. Miss Trinnell? Yes? I'm Dan Hopkins. Yes? One of your colleagues. Oh, yes. How do you do? Fine, thank you, and I'm glad to know you. I had heard that Miss Fitch had been replaced for the remainder of the term. Oh, excuse me. And I hope you'll be with us permanently. Welcome to Auburn. Thank you. Uh, may I speak to you privately? Oh, of course. Yes? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, it seems we got our signals a little mixed, Miss Trinnell. Yes. Your yes is very disconcerting, Miss Trinnell. Yes. Yes, you see, I'd schedule a very important baseball game for Saturday afternoon. I know. I'm sorry. I knew you would be. I'm afraid you'll have to postpone the game. Well, that's impossible. Why don't you postpone your matinee? It's the only matinee they're playing. Well, I'm afraid we're in the position of the irresistible force and the immovable object, aren't we? Well, I don't know how immovable an object you may be, Mr. Hopkins, but in this matter, I'm afraid I'll have to be irresistible. You are. I think we'd better let our principal decide this. Wait a minute, Mr. Trinnell. I've suddenly thought of a good plan. You let Dewey go to the baseball game, and I'll go to the matinee with you. Now, wait a minute. We're two grown, intelligent people. Are we? Well, what I mean, perhaps we ought to talk this over first. Oh, Mr. Hopkins, did you uh, wish to see me? Well, no. As a matter of fact, I didn't. I do, Mr. Steele. It wasn't anything of importance. Oh, I think it was. Yes, Miss Trinnell? Well, Mr. Hopkins and I were having a little argument, Mr. Steele, and I thought perhaps you might be able to settle it. It wasn't anything, really. Go on, Miss Trinnell. We were just arguing about whether or not this taxing of one's income is constitutional. You don't have to worry about that, Miss Trinnell. The House of Representatives will never pass an income tax law. Oh. You see, that's exactly what I told you. Thank you, both of you. Come on, Dewey. Right down the middle. Strike three. Then he's out. Oh! I'm finished, Miss Trinnell. May I go? Yes, Peter. My composition, Miss Trinnell. Thank you, Peter. Good night, Miss Trinnell. Good night. Have you finished, Kate? Yes. May I wait for Dewey? I don't have to go. Oh, I think you'd better go, Kate. Well, good night, Miss Chanel. Good night, dear. Five hundred. Five hundred and one for good measure. You may go, then. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Why did you lose your temper with Peter? Because he's a dumbbell saying a brig and a bark's the same thing. Oh, but you were wrong too, you know. What you described was a bargain tea, not a bark. A bark has two square rig masts. Only the mizzen is fore and aft rigged. More or less like this, you see? It's the barkentine whose foremast is square rigged. The main and the mizzen are fore and aft rigged. Of course. Gosh, how do you know about ships, Miss Trinnell? Well, I was born in New Bedford, the old whaling town. You were? Uh-huh. My grandfather was a whaling captain. He was? Yes, he sailed his own clipper around the horn. He did? I've got all his old books and maps and charts. You have? Someday, would you like to see them? Would I? Holy ca... I mean, gosh, Mr. Trinnell. <laughs> you know, I had you all wrong, Mr. Trinnell. 
Well, maybe we had each other wrong, Julie. This morning, I thought you were just another bad boy. Well, I'm pretty tough. Mm, that's all right, on two conditions. First one is, if you pick the right time. Know what the second is? No, ma'am. If it's natural for you. And I don't really think you're like that. Oh, sure I am. No, I don't think so. If you were, you wouldn't know so much about ships. I love ships. I was named for Admiral Dewey, you know. You were? It is queer you're being born in the middle of the continent and loving ships. My dad says it's in the blood. He's nutty about them, too. Only he makes lawnmowers. I see. Well, we'll talk about ships again sometime. Goodbye, Dewey. Can help you clean the blackboard, Miss Trial? Thank you, Dewey. That's very kind of you. You know, when I made the arrangements for the matinee, I didn't know about your baseball game. Oh, that's all right. I may have offended some people who really wanted to play. Oh, they'll get over it. Wouldn't you rather pitch on Saturday? Oh, the matinee was in the morning and the game was in the afternoon. But I guess Shakespeare's more important than baseball. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't know. <laughs> you're talking to. I wasn't talking to him. He's the umpire, isn't he? Right, too. And a boy, Dewey, whip, get the spinner. Strike him out, Dewey. Thursday. Where do you want it? Just put it right down there. 
Miss Trinnell's the only one that I know that's coming. Just look at this room. Miss Trinnell's awfully nice to offer to come here after school and teach you so you can keep up with your lessons. Are you using my good scissors to cut paper with? Yes, ma'am. And what are you doing with this nasty, sticky glue? I'm using it, Mom. Are you sure you're warm enough, dear? Warm enough? Holy cats, I'm hot. This bathrobe's making me sweat. Do we watch your language. Horses sweat, humans feel the heat. Did you cut up one of your father's silk handkerchiefs? He said I could. Such nonsense. I could have bought you a toy boat in the five and ten cent store. It's not a toy, Mom. It's a model. That's her now, Mom. Hurry. Everybody comes on Thursday. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Hopkins. Come right in. Thank you, ma'am. I hope you're well. Oh, well enough. Here, let me take your hat. It's Maid's Day. I'll do excuse the way I look. Dewey's in the den, Mr. Hopkins. Why, son, here you are in here. Hello, Dewey. How do you feel? Swell. If you're going to play football at Johnstown Prep this fall, you better take care of that me. His father and I have decided one thing positively, Mr. Hopkins. He's not to play football when he goes to Johnstown. Not after that injury. Aw, <laughs> uh, heck, Mom. Anybody think I was a baby? Won't you sit down, Mr. Hopkins? Thank you, ma'am. Oh, oh, doorbell's ring. More callers. I'll never get my biscuits on. Who are you expecting, your girl? Nah, I haven't got one. Well, come right in, Kate, dear. Look, I brought Dewey some ice cream. That's nice. How's your mother? Oh, she's fine. Uh, Where's Dewey? He's in the parlor. Go right in. Hello, Dewey. Hello. I brought you some ice cream. Mother said to get enough so everybody could have some. Hello, young lady. Hello, Mr. Hopkins. Come here. <laughs> you sit right here next to Dewey. All right. Here, dear. Give me the ice cream. I'll put it in the kitchen. It was sweet and thoughtful of Kate, wasn't it, Dewey? <laughs> yeah. Where's Steve? Oh, search me. Out playing ball somewhere, I guess. Well, old timer, I guess I'll leave you two. Oh, no, don't go. Don't leave me here alone. I'm sorry. I've got important business to attend to. I don't have to go. You see there? You have beautiful company. Goodbye, Kate. You take care of Dewey. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Hopkins. Goodbye, Mrs. Roberts. Oh, my goodness, I can't come out. My hands are in the dough. Please don't bother. Goodbye. Oh! Oh! Uh, were you leaving? Well, no. As a matter of fact, I was just hanging up my hat. Come in. Is that you, Miss Trudell? Uh, oh, I thought I recognized your voice. How's Dewey? Oh, he's just fine. He's in the parlor. Go right on in. And uh, you'll excuse me, won't you, if I go on with supper? It's Thursday, you know, Maid's Day out. Certainly, Mrs. Roberts. Go right ahead. Well, hello, Dewey. Hello, oh, Miss Janelle. Okay. This is Robert. You better serve the ice cream now. If anybody else comes, there won't be enough to go around. All right, Kate. Dewey, you look like a wounded warrior chieftain. Oh, I off. thought you were going, Mr. Hopkins. Huh? Oh, no, I, I came back to ask Dewey something. What about? Well, I wondered if maybe you'd like to drive over to the high school game with me on Saturday afternoon. Would I? Gee, that'd be great. It's too bad you're going to miss the country club dance tonight, Dewey. Ah, uh, I don't care about that sort of stuff. Do you like to dance, Mr. Hopkins? Well, if I was with a nice girl, I'd have to, wouldn't I? Nobody can make me dance unless I wanted to. Well, Mr. Hopkins must be very kind, Dewey. Oh, no, it isn't kindness at all. Dancing is just sort of a friendly way of talking to someone you think maybe you'd like to talk to, who wouldn't talk to you otherwise. You mean, once they're in your arms, they have to listen to you? Well, if by any chance she does accept your invitation, you have the feeling that perhaps she'd accepted your apology for asking her too soon after you'd met her. What I mean is... What do you want to ask you for at all? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that settles that, Mr. Hopkins. <laughs> How long before you'll be able to stand watch again, Skipper? Oh, the doctor says I'll be okay in a couple of weeks. Well, here's something to spoil your supper appetites. Well, I guess I better be running oh, along. Oh, can't you stay for some? No, thanks. This time I really must be gone. Oh, well, it was awfully nice of you to come, Mr. Hopkins. I thought Dewey might be lonesome, but I see I was mistaken. Good afternoon, Mr. Trinnell. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Hopkins. So long, Dewey. Goodbye, Mr. Hopkins. I don't have to go. Mr. Hopkins sure is a swell guy, isn't he? Yeah, swell. Kate, your mother's calling you. Oh, gosh, it's Thursday. And I promised Mother I'd be home early and set the table. That's fine. Bye. 
I can come back tomorrow, though. I can come back every day as long as you're home. That's fine. Goodbye, Dolly, and thanks for the ice cream. Oh, you're welcome. Goodbye, Dolly. Goodbye. I thought that kid would never go. Well, Dewey, I thought Kate was a great friend of yours. I don't have girls for friends. I mean, not kids. Dewey, I must have that dishpan. Oh, Mom, I'm not finished with it yet. There are times when a person can't even take a bath in this house. There's always a boat in the bathtub. Well, I must get my beats on. Dewey, may I see your boat? You can if you want to. She's in there. I haven't seen a boat since I left home. What do you mean? I hope you don't think I was fresh. I didn't mean to be honest. It's just about the nicest thing that anyone ever did for me. You launch it for me, will you, Miss Chanel? Oh, Dewey, you rigged her perfectly. <laughs> you even have the dead eyes and the dolphin striker. Gee, you're awful smart, Miss Chanel. Oh, you're the one who's smart. Someday you'll build real ships. You think I could? Of course I do. If that's what you still want to do when you grow up. Most fellows would laugh at you if you told them that. Well, I guess a lot of people laughed at Fulton, but that didn't stop him. I've never met two people like you and Mr. Hopkins. Never. <laughs> you're very sweet, Dewey. Sweet? Oh, sorry. That's Pop. Why, son, I didn't expect to find you out of bed. Well, Mr. Nell. How do you do, Mr. Robbins? I'm delighted to see you again. How are you, fella? Okay, Pop. <laughs> you know, you still put me in mind of a teacher I used to bring apples to way back in the sixth grade. Oh. <gasps> I suppose you've seen the boy's namesake, Admiral Dewey? Yes, it's a lovely picture. I guess by naming him after the Admiral has made him crazy about boats. <laughs> you know, this is supposed to be my den, but you never know it. Dewey here sort of took over about 12 years ago. Yes, sir, took his very first step right here in this room. And he's going to Johnstown Prep, my old alma mater. You know, his mother always says, Dewey was the prettiest baby. Oh, Pop, for Pete's sake. What you got there? Oh, I found some of the finest strawberries and wonderful looking string beans. Mother has supper pretty near cooked. Oh, well, this won't hurt anything. Wonderful beans, nice and tender. Cute little boat, isn't it, Mr. Nell? Cute? Oh, it's beautiful, I think. Well, so long as he doesn't take it too seriously, might as well tinker around and have fun while he can. Time enough to settle down when he has to. Oh, Mother! Mother! Goodbye, Dewey. Will you come again tomorrow, Miss Janelle? Yes, and we'll get right down to work on your arithmetic. You know, I want you to be a credit to me at Johnstown next fall. I'm not going to Johnstown Prep. But your mother said you've already been enrolled. I know I have. But I don't want to go. I, I want to play football under Hop. He coaches freshman high, too. Oh, I see. You're beautiful, Miss Trinnell. Hmm? Why, Dewey, how nice. I'm sorry. Oh, there's nothing to be sorry about. That was a very pretty compliment. Thank you. Goodbye. a little trouble with my carburetor. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, it's always acting up. Oh, well, then I suppose I'll have to walk home. And just when I was hoping you'd give me a lift. It's fixed. Jump in. I feel I should apologize to you. <laughs> I've never heard so many apologies in one short afternoon. Then you did hear it. Oh, dear. Well, what about it? What about what? The dance. Tonight? Tonight. Tonight. That's my 
goodbye, Mr. Blatton, and I'll take my place beside Mr. Steele. Now, everybody quiet. Look at the camera. And hold your diplomas up now. Yeah, that's right. All right now, folks. Ready? Hold it. One, two, three. Thank you. Yeah! It's a dandy group that you can be proud of. Oh, I am. Let me wish you a nice vacation, Miss Trinnell. I know it's a most difficult procedure to take over in the middle of a semester. And in appreciation of your fine work, I can say I am most happy you are going to be back with us next year. Thank you, Mr. Steele. And I hope you have a pleasant vacation. Thank you. Goodbye, Goodbye Miss Trinnell. Goodbye, Kate, darling. I'll see you in the fall. All right. Goodbye, Dewey. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Miss Trinnell, for seeing Dewey through. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm afraid he's very unappreciated. No, I don't think so. After sacrificing your time and energy so she could graduate and go to Johnston in the autumn, now he refuses to go. Well, maybe before vacation's over, he'll change his mind. I hope so. I hope so. Johnstown, you know, is my old alma mater. Johnstown, Johnstown, glorious alma mater. <laughs> Goodbye again. Goodbye, Mr. Roberts. Have a lovely vacation. Thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye, Mr. Roberts. Well, Dewey, have a nice summer. I know if I come back here to high school, you won't be my teacher. But I'll be able to see you and talk to you about boats. Yes, Dewey. <laughs> Yes, Nora. I finally made up my mind. I've decided to go with you and the other girls. Oh, how jolly. How very jolly. You're going to love it. Oh, wait. I have some snapshots I want to show you. I'll bring them right over. Oh. What, Dan? Teacher. <laughs> I thought you'd left. Nope. For the good of your soul, I thought I'd make one more try. I'm going to spend the summer vacation with Nadine Price and the other women teachers at Willow Springs. You don't want to have any fun, huh? I'm going away to rest and study and... and be bored to tears. Then how can I go with you? Buy a ticket to the same place. I'm a teacher, Dan. I'm a teacher too, but that doesn't mean you have to be a stuffed petticoat like Nadine Price. You're young. I've made up my mind. Change it. Nope. It's a woman's prerogative. No. Nora, there'd be three glorious months of summer with swimming and sailing. No. Doesn't that no mean yes you'd like to? It means I'm not going with you. Here they are. How do you do, Mr. Hopkins? Hello. Here's the veranda. That's I, third from the left. Mm -hmm. The springs are just out of the picture. My brownie wasn't big enough. You're not going to Willow Springs, Miss Price. I hear that's a very fast place. Oh, Mr. Hopkins, you've been misinformed. I believe you're chaffing me. I'm utterly incapable of that, Miss Price. Oh, we do have the jolliest times there. Long walks in the woods with the other girls picking wildflowers. Yes. And long, restful naps every day, including Sunday. Yes. And simply ferocious games of croquet. Why, Mr. Hopkins, you've been there. Not yet, but it sounds like a place I shouldn't miss. It sounds like a lovely place, Nadine. Just what I need. No. Just what you're going to get. My hair is good. Makes me sleepy. Oh, excuse me. Oh, never stifle a yawn. My doctor says it's a scientific fact that yawns are an aid to the digestion. Oh, isn't this exciting? Oh. Look at that flag. Nadine's in perfect form. Oh. It's your turn, Nora, darling, your turn. Nora? Hmm? It's your play. Oh. Now just hit it gently, straight through the home with you. That's the biggest thrill I've ever had in my whole life. Now just tip my ball into the home wicket. Don't be nervous, Nora, dear. 
Hit it. No, but I'm your partner. Oh, come back, Nora, dear. We have a spare ball. That one's gone into the river. We'll have the gardener get it. Oh, hello, Dan. Hello, Nora. I just happened to be staying at a lake about 210 miles from here, so I thought I'd drop by. Oh, so glad to see you. I wondered if you'd like to go for a drive. If I don't, I'll go crazy. Good, hop in. Dan, it's a golden chariot. How far away will it go? Far enough. That's exactly where I want to go. I said. Mm -hmm. What did I say? You said you were in love with me. Well, at least you were listening. Mm -hmm. What have you got to say about it? Oh, Dan, are you sure? Love isn't like a problem in arithmetic, Miss Trinnell. Darling. You can't prove it. You're never sure of any of the answers. Time like this. I'm hungry. Where are they? Out there somewhere. What are they doing? I haven't got my glasses. I hope they come to a permanent understanding. Smart businesswoman I have for a wife. What's business got to do with it? When they get married, we only rent half as many rooms. <laughs> How about Friday? I couldn't make it Friday. Thursday's much better for me. Thursday might be better for the whole neighborhood. How about Thursday? What do you think? Thursday will be most convenient, ladies. I'm most happy and very proud to have such a naval committee to help me with the bazaar. I think it's everyone's duty to do everything possible to help those poor... Be <laughs> Belgian children. Those atrocities, Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> If you must bounce that ball against the house, bounce it against the stable. Don't bounce it against the house. Ah, oh, gee, a frog can't do nothing. Hi, Dewey. Hey, look, I got a finish. Hey, boy, that's really great. Let's go down to Loomis's pond and try her out. Wait a second, I'll ask Mom. Hurry up. Hi, Mr. Steele. Goodbye, Steve. Hello, Dewey. Hello, Mr. Steele. Is that one of those toy boats I hear you make, Dewey? toy boat, sir. It's a model. I copied it from a picture of a real one. Mr. Hopkins sent me the side view, and Miss Trinnell sent me the front. It's a picture of a boat they were sailing in this summer. Very interesting, Dewey. Very interesting. May I keep these for a while, Dewey? I'll take care of them. I have a whole bunch of better ones at home with exact measurements. I'll bring them over to your house sometime. No, thank you, Dewey. These will be enough for my purpose. Goodbye, Dewey. Goodbye, Mr. Steele. Hello, Miss Cartwright. Have a nice vacation? Well, 
the weather was nice. Hello, Miss Trinnell. Hello, Miss Carver. Did you have a nice vacation, Miss Trinnell? Perfectly terrible. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I had a wonderful time. It's just none of Mr. Hopkins' business. Nice vacation, Miss Trinnell. Behave yourself. Yes, Miss Trinnell. Oh, Dad, I'm going to be very cross with you. Don't be. You look so sweet. Oh, Dad. Don't scold, teacher. I love you. You want me to lose my job? Yes. About Christmas time. I'm happy you had a pleasant vacation, Miss Trinnell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hopkins. Mr. Hopkins, Mr. Steele would like to see you in his office. Thank you. Go right in, Mr. Hopkins. Thank you. Come in, Mr. Hopkins. Good morning, Mr. Steele. Did you wish to see me? Yes. Yes, Mr. Hopkins. A certain matter has come to my attention. Yes. A delicate matter. One of great concern to our school. Well, what matter, Mr. Steele? Uh, sit down, Mr. Hopkins. Have you ever seen that picture before? Why, yes, I sent that. It's a picture of the Mabel. In my 23 years as principal of Auburn Grammar School, there has never been a tinge of scandal to smirch my record. I must confess you're beyond me, Mr. Steele. And to avoid any possibility of scandal, I'm asking you to resign today. Mr. Steele! Now, and if you refuse, I shall arrange for your immediate dismissal. Now, wait a minute. There's no... No, we'll not wait a minute. Not a second. We'll nip this whole thing in the butt before it gets beyond control. Before what gets beyond control? You admit you sent that card? Certainly. What of it? Then this cannot be a coincidence. Sent from the same place at approximately the same time. And I hope you won't pretend it is, or think I'm gullible enough to swallow it. Where did you get these cards, Mr. Steele? They fell into my hands quite by accident. And fortunately, too, I was able to prevent the whole thing becoming a subject of gossip. And believe me, Mr. Hopkins, if the parents of the children of this school learned that you and Miss Trinnell had spent the entire summer together, they'd tarn feather you and run you out of town. Just what are you insinuating when you say spent the summer together? You're missing the point, Mr. Hopkins. While I'm not attempting to judge your moral conduct, unfortunately, I have no control over public opinion. What has public opinion to do with this? You're a public servant. You're in public life. Like myself, you are a teacher and must set an example. And I have no other recourse in doing my duty except to ask you for your resignation. Is it your opinion that Miss Trinnell is involved in this? Anything I have to say to Miss Trinnell, I shall say to her privately as I have to you. Mr. Steele, there's no one to blame in this matter but myself. Miss Trinnell had nothing to do with it. I deliberately went where she was, and I should be the one to suffer if I violated any of the rules. Suppose I handed my resignation. Wouldn't that be sufficient, instead of stirring up a mess and causing her a lot of embarrassment? Why should she even have to know about it if, as you say, no one else knows but you? It would be a terrible thing to ask her to resign. She's a woman. She loves teaching. You know, I feel the eighth grade is the turning point in our lives, when we start our greatest preparation for the years to come. And so before the end of this year, I want all... Miss Trinnell, may I speak with you a moment, please? Excuse me. As a dear. What is it? You're beautiful. You never look so beautiful. For a moment, I'd forgotten the color of your eyes. Oh, Dan, did you call me out of class just to tell me? Stand there. Stand there against the wall in case you faint. I have something exciting to ask you. Are you insane? Only about you. Come on, Nora. Let's start conquering those new worlds now. Dan, you're, you're talking as if you were out of your head. I've just come to my senses. No. 
What's the matter with you? I'm happy, that's all. I don't want to wait any longer than I have to for you. Come on, have you got the nerve? The, the nerve for what? To quit school and marry me right now, this minute. But, Dan, I'm teaching him. Resign. Oh, Dan, you... We're two responsible people. We, we just can't pass up duties and obligations because we want to. I have. I suddenly figured out if I waited till Christmas, as I promised you, I'd be just that much more behind. So I resigned. Oh, no, you... We should have talked it over first. What did Mr. Steele say? <laughs> he was madder than a wet hen. He fussed and blustered around a bit, but he finally saw it my way. Dan, there's something wrong. No, there's something right. Absolutely right. But you're right, too. It would be silly for both of us to pick up and leave at the same time. Oh, Dan. My head's swimming. This morning, everything was so bright, and... I... When are you leaving? Now. Now? Well, the sooner I get in touch with people, the sooner you will be with me. Time's wasting and opportunities knocking all over the place. Oh, no, Dan, are you sure you're right? Believe me, darling, it's got to be this way. I wish you weren't a school teacher. I wish we weren't staying in the hall outside of the eighth grade because I want to kiss you. <laughs> I'll be at the Engineers Club in Chicago. I'll write you every day, twice on Tuesdays. Goodbye. Dan. Dan. You're sure you're not keeping something from me? What could I possibly want to keep from you, darling? I don't know. It's just that I've never seen you quite like this before. I've never seen me like this either. But I'll be back soon. I'll put rings on your fingers and bells on your toes. Darling, I love you so. That's the way to talk. No, no, don't come down. Stand there. Let me fill my eyes with you just as you are, Miss Trinnell. Smile just a little. Goodbye. Nora, dear, are you there? Yes, Nadine, come in. Nora. My dear, have you heard the news? No, not yet. Sit down, Nadine. Mr. Daniel Hopkins has left town. Oh, yes, I know that. He dropped in to say goodbye. Oh. Did he tell you why he left? Yes. Oh, I'll wager he didn't tell you the real reason. Yes, I'm sure he did. He got himself a better position. Well, my dear Miss Cartwright told me the real truth is he had to get out of town to avoid being embroiled in a scandal. What kind of a scandal? Well, Miss Cartwright couldn't hear everything, but she said Mr. Steele was furious. He found out that Mr. Hopkins was carrying on an illicit romance with some girl. Oh, nonsense. What girl? Oh, I'm coming to that. He wrote this girl some love letters and sent some pictures, and just by chance they came into Mr. Steele's possession. Evidently, this girl's parents found the letters and brought them to Mr. Steele's attention, and he was furious. Miss Cartwright heard Mr. Steele say, unless you resign today, Mr. Hopkins, I shall ask for your immediate dismissal. And then Mr. Steele closed the door. What was in these letters? Well, Miss Cartwright couldn't hear everything, but she does know the girl's first name was Mabel. Mabel who? Well, we spent two hours going through the registrar's books, and there are 12 girls in senior high whose first names are Mabel. Well, that proves their safety in numbers, doesn't it? Isn't it awful? It's a lot of wicked, malicious gossip. He resigned, didn't he? And he left town very suddenly, didn't he? If you ask me, one of those Mabels is a very lucky girl. Good evening, Miss Pettit. Is Miss Trinnell here? Yes, yeah, she's here. Come in. 
Just go in and I'll call her. Oh, here she is now. Good evening, Miss Fennell. Good evening, Dewey. I made this for you. Oh, thank you, Dewey. It's lovely. Do you recognize the Mabel? Mabel? Yes, I copied it from the picture postcard you sent me. Yours was perfect for the beam. I got the side view of Mr. Hopkins' picture. Mr. Hopkins' picture? Yeah, he sent me a picture of her, too. I wish I could have sailed her with you, Miss Trinnell. I bet you that was fun. Mabel. Mabel! Oh! Well, of course, Dewey. It was the Mabel, wasn't it? Dewey, did, did you show those picture postcards to anyone? Only Mr. Steele. Only Mr. Steele. Oh, Dewey! <laughs> Thank you, Dewey. I'll keep her always. Dewey, you're a, you're a darling. Night letter? Mm -mm. Full rate telegram. You got more than ten words. Night letter get there first thing in the morning. He drives fast. But uh, cut out this last love, because you said it already three times. Love Nora means the same thing as I love you, I love you, I love you. Now, you send it just as it is, hmm? It's a secret code. Right, pretty. It's real pretty. It's snowing. Thank goodness. I always say it isn't really Christmas unless it's a white Christmas. If you want to look after the turkey, we'll finish the tree. Goodness, I guess I'd better. And then what did he say? Who? Your letter. Oh. I read that, didn't I? At the end of June. Here we are. I hate to postpone it, but since you started in the middle of a semester, I'll have to be content to think you're right in not wanting to finish in the middle of one. It will fit beautifully into our plans, my darling, because in June, my company is sending me to Tegucigalpa. Good heavens, where's that? Well, he doesn't say, but he says it's a grand climate. He must be doing awfully well. He is wonderfully. I've always fancied you as a June bride anyway. Sweet. The trip will be our honeymoon. We'll see all the sights the Caribbean has to offer. Haiti, Trinidad, Cuba, Barbados. Tegucigalpa, capital of Honduras. Known for its silver gold, population 40,000. <gasps> My dear, I should have remembered. Well, go on. Well, it, it gets sort of personal here. Oh, now, Nora, that's not fair. He just says, any place would be wonderful alone with you. Sweet. I'll answer it, Mrs. Pettit. <gasps> What's the matter, Nora? Who is it? Nadine! Nadine! Nadine, look! Merry Christmas, Miss Price. Oh, Merry Christmas, Mr. Hopkins. Lieutenant Hopkins of the Royal Canadian Engineers. Oh, Dan. Dan. Nora. I have some papers I must correct. I'll see you later. Well, what's the matter with her? Darling, I've missed you. I knew it couldn't last. I knew it. I knew it. Oh, darling. Have you no confidence in me? Well, with me in this war, it'll be over in six months. It'll have to be. I have a very important date in June. Oh, don't cry, darling. I won't. Look, I have two whole weeks before I have to report. Two weeks? Sure. 
Dan, will you marry me? Now, right away. Why, Miss Trinnell? This is so sudden. How much owe you? Oh, about two dollars. I'll just wait for you. You're gonna have a long wait. We're staying for a week. I hear you, Mr. Avery. Don't take winter boarders. For heaven's sake, why didn't you tell us? He didn't ask. She says, anybody up the Avery farm? And I says, yes. And that's the truth. Hi, Cecil. What are you doing way up here? Merry Christmas, Mr. Avery. Well, bless me, Miss Trinnell. <laughs> Hello, Squire. And Dan Hopkins. Whatever brings you two up here in this part of the country? We thought maybe we'd share your Christmas vacation with you. You can't say no. You're married. For ten whole hours. Martha! Martha! My, my Miss Trinnell! Yeah. Oh, Hopkins, they're married. They're gonna spend the honeymoon with her. Oh, come in. Pretty baby, pretty baby, pretty baby. You know what? Mm-hmm. What? I'm hungry. That isn't what. What is? I've come to the conclusion that we're two of the nicest people I ever knew. Oh, you may be, but I'm not. Oh, what are you? I'm hungry. <laughs> You're beautiful. No, 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 definitely no. I'll tell you about my face. You might call it attractive and on occasion pretty with a mighty short look. <laughs> I still say you're beautiful. No, no, stop. That's just your masculine ego. A man thinks his wife has to be beautiful because he picked it. No, no, if anybody's beautiful in our family, darling, it's you. Look, there. You think so? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you say so, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> oh, you want to play, huh? No, no, no! <laughs> Stop the world, please, darling. It stopped. Thank you so much. For old Lang Syne, my dear, for old Lang Syne, we'll take a cup. It's 1917. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Mrs. Hopkins. Happy New Year, Mr. Hopkins. Happy New Year, dear. And the happiest New Year to you, darling. Fellas, I'll see you again before I leave. So long, Mr. Hopkins. Now you see why I quit school to join the Army. It wasn't the kind of a girl. It was, too. We just didn't know who the girl was, that's all. I hear uniforms attract women like flies. Who was she then? Miss Trunell. Everybody knows she's stuck on him. And you're just jealous. You're a liar. And you're another. Come on, Sucky. Hit him in the nose again. Come on, Chief. Come on, Steve. Hit him. Now, Sucky. Let him alone, Come on, Steve. You can do it. Suck him, Steve. Hit him, Steve. Hit Cut him. it out. Come on, Steve. Hit him with a nose, Steve. Come on, Dewey. Steve. Dewey Roberts, stop it this minute. Steve, Dewey, aren't you ashamed of yourselves? You'd better go home at once, all of you. There's nothing so fierce about Miss Chanel having a crush on a fella. She wouldn't any more mush around than... Beat it, will you? Let me alone. I've had a crush on a certain person ever since I was a little kid. You, but she's different. She's different than anybody. Now beat it, will you? I don't want to have anything to do with you or any of your family.
Miss Trinnell. Yes? Uh, this young man has asked my permission to pay you his respects. And I've decided to sidestep the conventions. Oh, oh well, that's very nice of you, Mr. Steele. He's made a confession to me too, Miss Trinnell. He has? Mr. Hopkins has told me you're as good as engaged. Oh, yes, of course. Allow me to wish you both luck. Oh, thank you, Mr. Steele. Oh, aren't you the smart one? I just had to see you in this room once more. Johnstown to school. <laughs> What's all this? But do we? Please, Mom, I've got to go. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, dear. Please, Pop, let me go. Oh, now, look here, son. Tell me what's happened. Please, you always wanted me to go, and now I want to go. Now, son, let's sit down and talk this all over. Lots of angles to this business of school, you know. Please, let's not talk it over. I've got to go. I've got to. Oh, dear. Is he sick? This one has three blades. It's 98 cents. How much is this one? Mm, that's real mother of pearl. That is a dollar and fifteen. Oh, my. Haven't you got one just like that for 98 cents? Well, since the Christmas rush is over, I suppose so. Mr. Nell. Hello, Kate. Look, do you think this is pretty? Oh, it's lovely, Kate. Is it for Steve? No, Dewey. As a going away present. If you'll talk to me, wrap it up like a present, please. But you can leave the price on. Is Dewey going away? Yes, to prep school on the all-night train by himself. Oh, well, wasn't that a sudden decision? I don't know, because he's not speaking to our family. Here you are, young lady. Oh, thank you. And thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Goodbye, Miss Janelle. Goodbye, darling. I want something for a man. Yes, something in a fine watch, perhaps. Cold? Not very. Want to go back to Miss Pettit? Oh, no. No, oh, everyone will be there. I, I want you just for myself. Oh, but there's so much I still have to know about you. All the things that happened when you were a child. All the usual things. Mumps, measles. <laughs> now you're not to cry. I can't. I'm, I'm all cried out. Oh, I'm so sorry, darling. I wanted to be brave. I wanted to be gay and amusing and make it easy for you to leave, but I can't. I'm selfish. You've given me the world and I want to keep it. Keep it for me too, dear. Ben, I don't want you to go. You would want me not to go. No, of course. 
course not. Am I enjoying my misery, darling? No. You're braver than I am. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm frightened. I'm frightened at the thought of being alone. I suppose in the end we all have to stand alone. You won't be alone. I'll be back. You can bank on that. I'll always be with you. Of course you will. We'd better be on our way. Dan, do you, do you mind if I don't go to the station with you? All those people will be there and I'd probably do something foolish. I hate foolish wives. And I'd probably bust out crying and the kids would think I'm a fine soldier. Miss me. Miss me a lot. When you go, there's nothing left. For goodness sake, how do you expect me to pack anything in there, Dewey? All set, Dewey. Upper six, car 14. Dewey, go get your new suit. It's in the den. Oh, dear. Everything happens on Thursday. Oh, now, Mama, you're just a little unstrung. I suppose you're not. Who's that now? How do you do, Mrs. Roberts? Oh, come in, Miss Janelle, come in. Forgive the mess, but it's Thursday as usual, everything to be done. I just came to say goodbye to Dewey. I didn't know he was going away this year. My dear, neither did we. Yes, he's finally decided to go to my old alma mater, Johnstown. Glorious Johnstown. <laughs> he's right inside in the den, Miss Janelle. I'll find him. Yes, you go right on in. Thank you. May I come in, Dewey? You can if you want to. Oh, how wonderful, Dewey. You're first, aren't they? They're just long pants, that's all. I wouldn't let you go without saying goodbye. Weren't you going to come and say goodbye to me? No. What's happened, Dewey? What's happened to what? To our old friendship. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, if you don't want to tell me, it's quite all right. Goodbye, Dewey. But I want to wish you luck. So much luck. Great guns, don't be nice to me. Go ahead and laugh at me. I'm not laughing. Anyway, you can tell him and have a lot of fun. Come over here, Dewey. Dewey. My grandfather used to say, when you run afoul dirty weather and there's a chance you may founder, spill your cargo. The ship that counts. Well, I couldn't help it. The fellows were talking about June, Mr. Hopkins. That's what I was fighting Steve about. Then I went up to your classroom to tell you I was sorry. And I saw you and him. So that's it. what I should tell you. I'd like you to understand. You don't have to tell me anything. Aren't you taking your ship with you? I'm through with that kid stuff. Is that the attitude you're going to take when you build real ships? Oh, I'll never build anything. Yes, you will. The way you're feeling now will pass, Dewey, believe me. I know how awful it is when people and things disappoint you. It hurts. It hurts to find out that the people you love are not stars, but human beings made of flesh and blood. That's the way people are. 
And those are the things we learn as we grow up. I love Mr. Hopkins, and he loves me. But my love for him hasn't changed my affection for you. It's hard to grow up, Dewey. But you mustn't let anyone or anything throw you off your course. Because you see, in the end, you'll have to stand by yourself. Ah, oh, gee, Miss Trinnell, don't cry. If you cry, I'll cry. I'm trying hard not to, Dewey. Dewey? Dewey, you'd better hurry. I'll tell your teacher's secret, Dewey. Each year, there's someone in the class who stands out. Someone whom a teacher counts on and loves as though that child were her own. You're one of those few. It's getting late, Dewey. Answer her, dear. Okay, Mom. Don't you see? You, you mustn't let me down, either. Stick to your course, sailor. Build your ships. Will you remember that? Yes, sir. And you'll remember me, too, a little? Of course, Miss Trinnell. I'm glad you came. Well, let's not say goodbye. Just good luck and fair winds. Come to the station with me. Oh, no, no, I couldn't do that. Please, just sort of be that away. That way I can never forget. All right, Dewey, I'll be there. at you, Kate. You're not honest? No, I never was. You must have been dreaming. Dream? Well, I couldn't even sleep. Here now. Hurry, son, hurry. Come, son, come. Goodbye, Dewey. Goodbye, Mr. Nell. Goodbye. You'll have to hurry, Dewey. You'll have to hurry. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, hurry. Now, 
I almost didn't know you without your glasses. What Bill Tower? <laughs> well, how nice to see you. <laughs> Gosh, I didn't think you'd remember me. Oh, I always remember my boys, Bill. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's why I'm here. Well, I'd have come back to school honest, but my dad was very ill and I had to... Oh, it's not you, Bill. It's one of my older boys, Dewey Roberts. Oh, is he one of your boys, too? Mm -hmm. oh. You know, I sort of like to catch a glimpse of him. You'll never see him here. He's coming down the service elevator and going through the back into the banquet hall. I got it straight from the bell, Captain. Oh, dear. Well, I guess I might as well go, then. Look, Mr. Trinnell, you follow me and play wise. I'll get you into his office. Come on. You. Next car, please. Maybe this isn't such a good idea. How would you like it if I barged in on you when you had just been nominated for President of the United States and probably rehearsing your acceptance speech? You'd be right there, ma'am, correcting my speech. <laughs> what do you know about that? What do you know about what? Do you suppose that dame isn't in with Roberts? It's a fortune teller down the street. Why don't you ask her? This way, please. Bill, suppose he doesn't remember me. Well, then I'll tell my dad not to vote for him. Oh. Come on. There's a three-ring circus in that room. They'll never notice you. But if they do, just say you were told to wait there. And that ain't, uh, isn't a lie, because I'm really telling you, see? Bill, it sounds as if you're headed for the diplomatic service. Here you are, madam. Mr. Roberts is waiting for you. Excuse me, gentlemen. Thank you, young man. Right this way, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, pardon, sir. Sorry. Hello. Seventeen. I believe this chair will be all right. Thank God. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sure we can find a chair in here, madam. Wait. Hello. Seventeen. Here we are. Sit right here. I'm sorry. Thank you, young man. Not at all. I see Mr. Robert. I'm sorry, Mr. Robert. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yes. Pardon me. Yes. What's your business? Uh, uh, I was I'm told sorry. to wait. Oh, I see. Released yet. I know. I know everybody's waiting. I'm sorry. I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. Where is he, Beulah? He's in there, and for heaven's sake, will you tell him to hurry? Hello. I'm sorry, friends, but Mr. Roberts is on the air in a very few minutes, so he can't greet you personally as he'd like to greet every member of the party. Will you please excuse him? Yes. 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 Dewey, Dewey Roberts. Get ready, gentlemen. Nora Turnell. Yes? I'm sorry, ma'am. I just want to wish you luck. Mr. Thank Roberts, please. I'm so proud of you. Excuse me. It's all over but the sweeping out. I'm sorry, Mr. Robert. There's such a crowd in the lobby, we'd never get there on track. It's incredible the way they're climbing on your bandwagon at the last minute, Roberts. For now. Even a couple of the southern states are putting out feelers. Nora, We've now. had telegrams endorsing you from the most unexpected sources. Your speech tonight will become an avalanche of victory. For now, for now. That's who it was, Miss Trinnell. Take me up again, quick. Mr. Roberts, come back here. Mr. Roberts, please. Mr. Roberts. Down, please. Here. Yes, Mr. Roberts? 
Where is she? Oh, Mrs. Roberts, she's still here. I'll call her. No, please. I mean Miss Trinnell. Miss Trinnell. Miss Trinnell. Kate, Miss Trinnell was here and Beulah let her go. Get the house detectives. Watch the elevator. Stop a woman in... In a in... blue and white print dress, a blue coat and a blue hat, and a very beautiful smile. Hello, Mr. Roberts' apartment. Just a minute, please. Me, lady. I'm the house officer. Did you just come down the elevator? Yes. Were you on the sixth floor? Yes. If you're wanted, come with me, please. Well, there, there must be some mistake. Smile. Why? Just smile. Well. Yep, you're her. But no I... fuss. Come quietly. Next car, please. What up with you today? Maybe you got some more letters of his, huh? Never mind, Mason. Leave her alone. She hasn't done anything. Quiet. Sex. <laughs> Stay on the phone. We've got to find her. Stay off the line. Please, I'm waiting. To... Mr. Roberts, please. You've got to come. We can't stall any longer. Here she is, Mr. Roberts. I caught her as she was trying to leave the hotel. Miss Trinnell, can you ever forgive me? Oh, you, of course. You know what it was? It was those silly hats you women of wear. Of course. <laughs> is that... It's not Kate. It is. Yes, Miss Trinnell, I finally got him. Mr. Roberts, <laughs> please. We can't keep the whole country waiting like this. Why not? I'm sorry, gentlemen. You will excuse us, won't you? But for just about 30 seconds. Mr. Nell, Mr. Nell, Mr. Nell oh, tell him I was one of your boys, too. Will you? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> we had some teacher, didn't we, son? Gosh, Come you bet, sir. Now, tell us what you're doing in Washington. Teaching arithmetic to the Brain Trust? <laughs> I've been promoted, but not that far. I'm teaching high school now. I've been in Washington 18 years. You know, I still have the Miss Trinnell. Oh, and I still have the Mabel. <laughs> How's Mr. Hopkins? You know, I've never even told Kate the secret. What secret? I suppose it's all right to tell her now. Why, Miss Trinnell and Hop were married. You were? Oh, it's years late, but congratulations. Remember the night we went away on the same train? Boy, was I proud because he was in uniform. Yes, I remember. He never came back from France. But I mustn't keep you. I know how busy you are and how exciting it must be. You should see the crowd. You don't think we're going to let you escape us for another quarter of a century? I should say not. Kate, hang on to her. Mr. Roberts, please. <laughs> Was a good boy.